So very excited here um, this to conclude um, the Firefly Hyperledger launch event today. It's been actually a great week uh, talking with people um, and the culmination of you know, a number of months of working with the Hyper Brian and the Hyperledger team. Um, so I guess uh, I think Brian, myself, Steve, and also Andrew, one of our developers who will do a demo as part of this session. Um, just for some quick intros in case um, someone is not familiar with Brian. <laughs> um, so maybe you could um, you say a few words about yourself. Yep, uh, Executive Director of Hyperledger, um, based in the Bay Area. Uh, I've been working for the Linux Foundation for over five years now uh, and uh, on Hyperledger and a number of new things recently. But uh, just really excited to uh, welcome Firefly to the community and, and Calypso really as well. Thanks, Brian and Steve. Uh, one, hi, everyone. One of the co-founders of Kaleido, along with uh, Sophia. And Kaleido is a, a technology startup a company that's focused on uh, enterprise blockchain uh, solutions, specifically for enterprise. So we, we've worked across a lot of major industries, um, you know, help, helping customers. And, and our story is, is Firefly story and Firefly story is our story <laughs> sort of. Uh, and as we've um, spent the last six years in this space and, and, and we really are excited about, um, you know, what, what this new community could could do to accelerate the, the larger space. Great. Well, let's uh, jump in. We wanted to uh, start, I guess, with a couple thoughts um, with Brian. Um, I you mean, know, as Steve was saying, we've, we've been living this space for um, about almost four years now as Kaleido and, you know, felt really motivated and passionate to open this up, to, to grow a real community. Although we'd open source portions of this before and had had some people on our previous panel who um, who had been touching the tech, I guess. So, so we're really excited about growing the community. I wanted to um, hear from you, Brian, some initial thoughts. I mean, what gets you excited about Firefly and sparks your interest um, with the project? Yeah, well, um, you know, I think Firefly addresses what's been a longstanding uh, challenge, uh, which feels uh, very much like the, the early days of like the Linux operating system when to compile your own kernel, when the uh, user interface was a very, very basic X Windows stuff that had been ported over from Solaris or, or whatever. Uh, I, and, um, and it very much felt like a, a, a hacker only kind of environment, right? Uh, uh, and uh, over time, you know, obviously you had GNOME and you had other parts of the of the stack emerge, and finally a usable operating system that uh, you know you could put on the Chromebooks, you could put it in anything else, um, and and uh, and you know we had a couple of early projects that tried to build the bridge between the low level plumbing and the developer friendly kind of environment, things like Composer, which uh, I know you're all familiar with, um, and Composer really was best as like a, a design tool, a design thinking tool, but people wanted to use it to build and manage their production systems. Systems. So uh, that was always a challenge, um, and that was one reason I think the composer team themselves decided to to pull back on the project. And uh, was you know that was there wasn't the right approach to a high level tool to be able to build and and, and manage apps that balance this on chain off chain kind of thing. So the prospect of now having a tool again that makes it easy to build uh, uh, and one that has the benefit of being able to work across multiple ledgers, which matches very neatly our our objective since the beginning at Hyperledger, which was to say, you know, there's fabric and it's really market leading and has all this power and complexity. It's like a gigantic chainsaw, right? Um, but there's other ledger platforms in Hyperledger, including Bezu, uh, which is, you know, obviously inherits the Ethereum stack. So um, the multi-ledger nature uh, of, of uh, Firefly is su super important to us. And I'm really happy to see now this this backbone, this kind of, you know, uh, forming um, that other things could potentially plug into other projects in Hyperledger. That led into a second question I wanted to ask, just about the Hyperledger greenhouse. And you have, you know, a collection of code bases that are really focused on enterprise blockchain communities. Um, you mentioned Besu and Fabric. I mean, how do you feel Firefly? Um, you know, there's the multi-protocol aspect of it, and more broadly, how do you see Firefly relating to other communities in Hyperledger? And the other code bases. Good question. Uh 
Well, um, I'm happy to, to, to see that there is uh, uh, now fabric support, even though it's just beginning, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's been very clear that there's a lot of interest from the fabric team, especially those who recently put out the fabric smart client to figure out how to collaborate, collaborate early on, maybe even combine efforts in some really interesting way uh, and, and, and make it a first class supported platform. Uh, and, uh, underneath Firefly, uh, I, I, and, and in addition, obviously, I, I'm hoping Bezu uh, yeah, the, and the community around that rallies in a similar way. Um, but some of the other projects might be interesting too. Like it'd be interesting to see if there was a common design pattern or paradigm for doing cross-chain interoperability, where being able to adopt uh, the primitives being built inside of Cactus might be something interesting to slot into there. Um, I also would be interesting to see if there were cryptographic primitives that uh, were recurring in, in the design of, of uh, you know, Firefly-based apps that meant pulling in Ursa, which is a library of cryptographic primitives, um, would be really useful too. So I actually think there's potential to collaborate with probably all of the different projects in Hyperledger and have them fit into this kind of framing. Because um, I, I think very few of them uh, were designed primarily with like making life very, very easy for the for the first time developers, for the early developers, the people who really focus on the business here. Um, uh, and I think this is a nice, a nice path to being able to get there. and avenues and collaboration in store in the coming months, um, just within the Hyperledger community alone. And then more broadly, there's, you know, there's other tech uh, where, you know, open source communities like Node-RED and others that have already, uh, you know, communicated with us. So we're, we're excited to see that grow. I, I guess that last question I was going to ask you, um, just as you, uh, as people, you know, come out of today, the Firefly Hyperledger Day, what do you think they should keep an eye out for or what sort of activities would you recommend or invite them to? That's a good question. Um, well, uh, definitely having a responsive core maintainer community involved uh, uh, participating in chat on, on the mailing list, helping make sure that the uh, that developer experience is smooth. Being uh, Having that activity will build confidence on, in the part of other people, and they'll, they'll jump in as well. And I think that's a faster way to build community than something that kind of, you know, launches and then looks a little, like, almost like a, like a ghost town, right? So maintaining that momentum is pretty cool. The other thing is, you, you know, the best projects early on have advocates out there who are presenting at uh, meetups, uh, you know, virtual meetups as they are now, uh, that sort of thing, or or even at other conferences. Um, you know, the Linux Foundation produces over 100 different conferences a year, uh, and, and uh, like the upcoming uh, Open Source Summit uh, in September in Seattle, which will be a hybrid virtual real, real one. Um, but uh, all over the world, and, and once we reopen again, most of those will go back to being face-to-face. -face. So presenting at those, uh, getting out there, writing, uh, post for Medium uh, or for for other sorts of like channels, um, uh, tweeting about updates. You know, those are all things. Obviously, we at Hyperledger want to help the project do and do with a Hyperledger voice and through the channels we've set up. Um, so uh, uh, the more that that we can collaborate on that and that that kind of advocacy, I think the more effective we will be at building both the user community and a, and a contributor community. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, we have our eyes on OSCON, so <laughs> we're going to submit some sessions for that. And um, I've been in talks with Ryan, David, and others about that, but that's great, great advice. Um, well, thanks again, Brian, for your support, um, getting, you know, ahead of this week and, and here with us today to launch um, sort of an invitation to the community to join. I really appreciate your perspectives and, and, and ongoing support. I think with that, we'll transition to, um, I would like to give a little a little bit of the business context for Firefly and Steve will get into um, walking over, you know, through what it, it actually is and does. I think from a business context, one thing we've been talking, some of the panels and other activities today, um, you know, if you look at enterprise blockchain and the sort of the promise of enterprise blockchain, People look at solving you know, deep problems around transparency and trust that go all the way back into the you know, core systems of record of companies. And until now, we didn't have a technology that could really provide that shared view of the data and that shared application logic. And then as we went through uh, COVID over the last year and a half, you know, we saw the implications to supply chain, 
um, you know, the inefficiencies, you know, a lot, a lot of issues will be just um, as a society, things started breaking down. So I think there's a big spotlight on how can we do a better job as um, people are digitally transforming and moving to the cloud to solve some of these um, economic inefficiencies and social um, problems that result um, through some of the misfunction of these systems. Um, we've seen that during COVID, you know, some industries such as the insurance industry has told us um, in North America, their digital transformation roadmaps have accelerated by a decade. Across all industries, various analysts um, have done research on this and they're saying there's about a seven to eight year acceleration of that. So we have the uh, industry drivers and business drivers, but um, behind some of these changes. McKinsey did some recent um, research and saw that you know, eight, only 8% 8 of companies believe that their current business models will remain viable if they don't digitize. So they're seeing this digital transformation in the back office as a real imperative. Um, and they and digital ecosystems um, are, are estimated to account for 30% of global corporate revenues um, just in the next you know, four or five years alone. It's interesting to see some of the research as well, just as applied to different industry sectors. And you see sort of a, a blending across industry um, sort of value. And now the value of the network is the network rather than one company's product. It's the health of the network and who they're associating with and the, and the type of um, business outcomes and value they could generate for their end users. So uh, with, with all of this, we see some of the business drivers and some of the movements in the industry where, to where you know, the ecosystem economy you know, is arriving and in some sectors has already arrived. But the technology over the last five, six years of enterprise blockchain has really um, struggled to reach the promise um, and to deliver that promise. And there's some, there's some reasons for that that have become evident to all, of, um, to all the parties in the blockchain space. You know, these cross-party flows are um, pretty sophisticated in terms of the needs around privacy and security. Um, overall, enterprises have requirements around privacy, compliance, and um, integration with existing core systems and sources of data for their production-ready solutions. But meanwhile, as they're adopting these new emerging technology sets, they're dealing with new peer-to-peer uh, -peer frameworks, new programming languages, new uh, containerization and other um, constructs. That, that can be new internally. So they, they really struggle um, when they pick up and just try to build all the components needed on a blockchain solution, um, especially when the actual the running of the node and the, blo you know, the blockchain piece of it um, from a node perspective might be five to 10% of the solution. And there's many uh, decentralized off-chain tech, um, off tech components as well as at the app and the middleware that they need to pull together in order to provide a, a viable solution. So what it basically they think the job initially is writing some smart contracts, starting a blockchain node, you know, building a web app, and then just deploying. So a couple of components, you know, a few, a few months, four to six months maybe to do that. What the job really becomes is like you know, looking at sort of the architecture and design and how do you actually use blockchain and then getting into um, looking at the architecture and design of all the different off-chain pieces so that the apps can talk to each other. Um, you're exchanging you know, documents, um, private documents between parties, you know, solving problems that are, are um, needed for the solution, but it's much beyond just running the node or writing a smart contract. And then uh, struggling to code to the blockchain APIs and the different protocols or different levels of sophistication and ease of use around that aspect. So it's a blocker for traditional enterprise um, developers who are looking for RESTful APIs. So then, you know, they come to the realization deployment can be pretty far off and it's really more like 40 components. And it could be two to four years to um, get into production with some of these ambitious projects that, that get announced with big fanfare and then they run into the reality of what it really looks like to build one of these solutions. So what should the job be? You know, we believe it should be modeling the assets and the data, defining the process orchestration, workflows, uh, coding to simple APIs and clicking deploy. So one platform and now something that took years could be done in weeks. <laughs> um, I, it's just the transition with the last thought, you know, what does this mean in terms of business impact? 
and really helping industries move forward to be able to use these decentralized multi-party solutions. Uh, first, there's a huge cost savings from what we see as the Gen 1 way, sort of looking at a blockchain, and Gen 2, which some, some consortia have already moved towards in some industries, and we're hoping now by open sourcing Firefly to help the whole um, you know, blockchain space move towards a, a more efficient way of working. And what does that look like in terms of a distribution of effort? You know, in the past with the Gen 1, you know, maybe half of what you were doing was all on the plumbing layer. Things like architecture, infrastructure design, um, reusability, you know, were smaller pieces. And then the business value use case ended up being a very, you know, very thin slice. So you people would have a very ambitious goal for their consortium or project and then spend so much time on the money, time and money on the plumbing that they end up building sort of a simple calculator app when they really needed, you know, very complex sort of financial market exchange was the initial vision. Now with these, this Gen 2, a way of working, uh, the plumbing, you know, is greatly simplified. And when you see the demo, you'll see what that looks like in terms of what you get versus lines of code as an example. Uh, a lot of the design is sort of baked in so that bringing in the the commodity type pieces of architecture and the off with the off chain decentralized new components along with the blockchain. You know, you don't need to have a PhD to do to do all of this. So really um, democratizing access to building blockchain solutions to all of the enterprise developers out there. And then really getting to the business value um, now being you know, the majority of what you're doing and able to deliver to um, to clients, companies and uh, consumers. So with that, I think I'm going to um, hand the baton over to Steve, who's going to talk a bit more about Firefly. All right. Thanks, Sophia. And, and, and I, I think, you, you know, Firefly setting out, it's, a, it's an ambitious goal for a project to, to really take a half step back and, and look at that graph and say, OK, something's off here. If, you, if you're really spending most of your budget on a project on plumbing, Right, which we've seen over and over again. Um, you know, how, how can we invert that? You know, plumbing is a is a great candidate to build an open source community around. Just solve it as an ecosystem, as a community, um, and, and sort of allow that budget to be inverted. And so what, what we're introducing today is is Firefly, a part of the, the Hyperledger community coming in. Um, uh, at, at the lab stage and, and I'm looking to grow and advance uh, through uh, the, the community there and be incubated um, uh, is a what we're calling a multi-party system and we're gonna I'm gonna come back to that term a, a few times over but the idea of you know sort of a larger system that, that's not that's a, that's a bit broader than a blockchain but it's really focused on data flows and, and that cross-party flow of data. But before I, I get into that detail, I, I want to start with an analogy because we found this is really helpful. If you think about Docker, and, and the first time that, that you've used it or, or saw it, um, maybe maybe you're younger and you just take it for granted. But some of us <laughs> some of us saw the world before Docker, uh, where software was all over the place, and and in those days your budget, your IT budget for a project was dominated by not your business application, but dealing with a, a lot of uh, plumbing, essentially, type of operations. Um, so Docker came along and said, hey, let's put all software into the same box. And if we do that, we can standardize networking, we can standardize security, we can standardize how we do high availability and scalability. Um, very hard problems, right, that, that you could solve once in a uniform way. Uh, and that was great for a developer running a Docker container on their laptop. But for an enterprise to go into production with 100 or 1,000 Docker containers, it was just not possible or feasible. And so the market sort of became stuck or there was a, a need for a larger system. And along came Kubernetes, really sort of standing in the gap there um, and giving you this, that, that broader control plane upon which to build and, and orchestrate 
and manage your, you know, how many ever hundreds of, of dockers. Um, and it was designed to be really pluggable. So there's, there's more than one choice for networking. And, you know, you know, the cloud providers have come in and plug in, plugged in underneath and, um, you know, technology providers have come along and, and plug in and built tools around this. And you have this larger system, this enterprise system around Docker, which importantly delivered the initial promise of Docker itself, right? The, the breakthrough of all software fitting in the same box. It's now achievable or consumable. How about blockchain? So if you think about blockchain, wow, when it came along, there's, so, there's like, it just makes sense if, if you've been in the, the enterprise software space. If you've seen the back office of companies and the sprawling estate of hundreds of systems, um, if you've seen the size of business networks, hundreds, thousands of participants in a supply chain or in a financial network or, or in a, you know, a value chain in the insurance space or whatever it is, right? And just the, the lack, the, the total amount of inefficiency, the lack of coordination, it just makes sense. However, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear to say that enterprises just can't get into production. It's, it's, it's really hard technology to manage. And, and we see Firefly as coming along and providing an enterprise system. So similar to how Kubernetes was sort of a, a larger, you know, pluggable, extensible control plane and system around Docker, you know, we see Firefly as a multi-party system being a larger system where there's a blockchain still there, right? But we're also looking at all the other layers of the stack and all the plumbing that we were just talking about a minute ago that can dominate, you know, the budget for, for a, an enterprise blockchain solution, right? All these layers in the middleware space, um, you know, connecting to back office systems and securely, you know, privately connecting across the business network and, you know, managing member onboarding and, and the DevOps around shared IT assets and, and on top of all of that, a, a workflow, right? So those sorts of things. And I think if you if you apply a, 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 an open source lens to this, you, you know, it's really interesting to observe just how much innovation has happened in the past years towards the bottom of that stack. But, but to date, no comprehensive open source project um, that's, that's trying to really drive that simplification all the way up to the application layer and, and encapsulate a multiple layers into a pluggable framework. And, and you know, it's, it's really just a quick review on what data flows look like inside of a decentralized business network, um, you know, where each member in these dotted line circles has a full stack of its own technology right, that, that stack we were just talking about, it doesn't exist once, it exists in every organization's, you know, IT realm. Uh, and, and that stack needs to connect privately back office, but it also needs to connect across the business network, right? And we see multiple kinds of operations here. They're happening, of course, there's the ledger of the blockchain itself, but almost always, almost always in an enterprise project, there's private data exchange, Usually the more private, the better. That's, that's quite commonly is coupled with some form of broadcast as well. So it's not just one or the other. We often see both. Um, and then having that shared ledger, building digital assets and using tokens and so on, you know, is a really powerful programming construct. So it's all of those things together that, that this is the shape of the problem that you need to solve just to, to build and deploy one blockchain use case across a business network. This is all the, all these lines are plumbing, right? All these, all these rectangles in the stack are, are, are plumbing uh, in different parts of the solution. So with that, I'd like to introduce Firefly, a, a multi-party system built and designed for cross-organization data flows. That's what it's about at the end of the day. You know, understanding decentralized architecture and the fact that all organizations are gonna be running a stack. And, and because there are so many lines of collaboration and, and places for data to flow, you know, having a very event-driven system and framework to really 
um, you know, tie together and coordinate all the disparate systems that, that exist uh, across, within a business network and also the, the legacy and, and core back office systems that exist around the business network as well. So all of that coordination is, is really, you know, a business process um, uh, feat of engineering. And so trying to make that part of the problem orders of magnitude simpler. Uh, for 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 a poor old developer who's who's just trying to get a piece of data from point A to point B often, right? And, and really importantly, just like Kubernetes, a flexible technology framework. You know, because because a there's lots of different technologies. B there's different implementations of how to do messaging or data exchange. But but most importantly, C. There's also emerging technologies, you know, confidential computing, zero knowledge proofs, uh, and so on, that, that really ought to fit into this larger multi-party system. So as you put the system in place, it can evolve with technologies, different blockchains, um, you know, as well as off-chain technologies. Um, just a quick word on the seed of the contribution. Um, this this is coming um, from primarily from Kaleido, uh, the initial 80,000 lines of code that, that are Firefly within Hyperledger now. Um, this, this is a, our six years of learnings as well as three years of active development. So we've had this these capabilities in-house as Kaleido products, and but we're we're convinced and, and we have large very large customers, some of whom spoke throughout the day today. Um, you know, that, that are running on the Kaleido proprietary version of the code, it became clear to us to that the, the, the right thing for a big ambitious sort of platform like this is, you know, to really put it in the open, to, to invite others to contribute, um, to help, to let the community help shape, you know, how the investments go into this code going forward, and to really build a stronger uh, uh, product we were just talking with Brian a few minutes ago about the, the synergies of, across um, different Hyperledger communities. And we want to explore those going forward as sort of like an umbrella project. We sometimes have referred to, to Hyperledger, or excuse me, to Firefly to date, um, you know, and plugging in some of those other uh, cross pollinations as well going forward. Um, so just zooming in for a second on the Firefly node it, itself. Uh, there will be recordings up uh, soon if you want to really dig dig into the technical workshop. There also are pointers available in the booth if you want to if you need help being routed into the, to the community through the, the larger Hyperledger website. Um, but just really quickly on the node itself, the core is is essentially the brain that's there. That's the thing that you you interact with as a developer building your application. It's there to give you really simple APIs and web hooks to say, hey, I wanna send this piece of data. Hey, give me a callback when you've received it. You know, provide, give me the proof with the blockchain. I don't wanna go into the low level, you know, you know RPC, you know, you know um, transaction pool, you know, checking and management of, of trying to, all the ping pong uh, of, of the, the different pieces of that. Can you just make that simple for me, please? Um, and abstract that away from me. And, and that's what the core is doing. Um, sitting underneath the core are a layer of connectors that are doing the heavy lifting, that are interacting with the different runtimes. These connectors have a standard unified um, you know, interface that they conform to, to make it really pluggable. So that the blockchain interface, which is definitely doing a lot of heavy lifting, you know, there's one there for Ethereum, you'll see in, in the Firefly, there's also you know, ETH Connect, but there's also Corda Connect sitting alongside of it. There are discussions today about Fabric Connect and, and getting that launched and, and built. And there may be even another community out there that, that wants to uh, help merge some code in to make that possible. But alongside the blockchain, really importantly, bringing, Sophia said, 5 to 10%. Well, what about the other 90%? All these other forms of plumbing that until today you've had to do to build a blockchain use case off-chain you know, data exchange, whether it's structured or whether there's a gigabyte file, you know, large blobs being passed around, um, you know, whether there's broadcast going on of, of, of events or, or data that, that's being synchronized. And then how does that all connect together? 
Um, so if I send something to you privately, let's pin that to the blockchain. Let's get global ordering and finality and, and keep that into the puzzle. I already mentioned multi-protocol that's really important to us uh, to, to um, you know, give that a flexibility and choice, but also to tap into the, the strength of and, and unique attributes of some of these underlying protocols. So they're still there. That power is still available. While, while there are easy interfaces into them, the, the existing interfaces are still there. You can still write, you know, arbitrarily complex smart contracts or chain codes if that's if that's what you desire to do. And that's there for that 5% of the time. But for the rest of the time when you're using, you know, what we now recognize are pretty common patterns, Firefly is there to give you simple APIs to accomplish that. Almost like a database. You, CRUD operations are great most of the time. Occasionally, you need to write that you know, stored procedure with, with a bunch of, of data wrangling inside of it. And so, so that we see that similarity there. Firefly is ready for enterprise. It's, it is an active code base, but it, it is designed for enterprise use. I, you know that, and, and you understand that with the Hyperledger community and the licensing um, that it implies, as well as the open governance that it brings. Um, you know, the Firefly brings with it, you know, back office, core cloud engineering chops. And so it's cloud ready, it's scalable and resilient. And I've already mentioned why uh, being highly pluggable is, is important for this project as well. So Fire, your, your blockchain runs better with Firefly. Um, you, you're still getting global ordering finality, you know, the immutability of data, um, awesome things like tokens and NFTs. Um, triggering, but we, we take that a level up. So it's not just triggering, it's event streaming. It's it's not just getting transaction in, it's automatic batching. Um, you know, there are simple API, RESTful APIs so that it's not low level, uh, per, uh, um, you know, RPC calls and, and so on. And then unifying the identities. So, so everything has an identity, um, you know, construct built into it. Your choice for, for off-chain messaging may not be the same as, as identity sort of a system as the blockchain itself. And so having an identity registry with organizations and simple member management and onboarding, putting all of that in one place, almost like an address book, um, is another really important piece of, of how Firefly works. So finally, just real, real quickly on the road ahead, today is a launch, it's, it's a beginning. Uh, Fortunately, we're not starting from st standing still. We have a running start, as, as I mentioned, the, the three years of active development and six years in the blockchain space. Seeding this, this contribution has already been a, a, a jolt of energy from different parts of the Hyperledger space and even beyond uh, about uh, you know, um, wanting to get involved. We encourage everyone to, to get involved uh, the community building process is now officially underway. Uh, so there will be, you know, all the things you would expect happening, maintainer selections, um, you know, open meetings happening on a regular basis. There's a, a rocket chat channel set up uh, on, on the Hyperledger chat a tool. So you can get plugged in there. You can certainly download the code today, uh, but looking forward, uh, at the roadmap, there are definitely some high priority items that, that are already feedback in, right, from the community uh, fabric I talked about, as well as looking at some, some specific token uh, use cases, which are um, quite common, again, almost like the, the CRUD versus stored procedure example I was using a minute ago. There's some common things that are, happen with tokens. We want to extend Firefly to make, to, to make those a whole lot easier than they are today. One simple example of delivery versus payment. I send you data or, or a thing, an asset. I want tokens back, value tokens back in exchange, right? So how, how, how do you make that happen atomically? Um, there, are, there are common ways to do that. So those sorts of, of things are the, the, the Firefly community is, is already active on, and if you're interested in those things, do, do plug in. And, and then finally, you know, all this trending towards a 1.0 release, we, we envision and we hope that that's later this year, you know, towards maybe towards the end of the year, um, something hardened, you know, scale tested, ready, 
uh, security audited, and, and, and so on. And so, you know, stay tuned for, for how all that evolves and, 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 and get involved. And so with that, um, what I'm going to do is actually transition over and, and stop my share here and let uh, and invite Andrew from the team to to uh, to, to come in.